Embryonic stem cells can be made by a number of different uh, techniques. Most embryonic stem cells are derived from in vitro fertilization embryos. So couples who are undergoing assisted reproduction and the egg and sperm are brought together in the petri dish. And then from the embryos, you derive embryonic stem cells. The second strategy is to use nuclear transfer. This is where you would take an individual cell and you would take its DNA and put it into an egg whose own DNA has been removed. That will then create an embryonic stem cell that's a perfect genetic match for the donor. The third way that we make cells is by this process of parthenogenesis. And this is a fascinating process where the egg is activated without fertilization, so there's no contribution of sperm, and it's tricked, if you will, into developing into an embryo. It can never develop into a, a full organism, but it can make embryonic stem cells. So we know now with great certainty that the uh, first supposed nuclear transfer line from the Koreans is indeed a parthenogenetically derived line. It came entirely from the cells of the woman who donated the eggs. Now in that case, one reason it's interesting is in that original experiment, they, they took the donor cells, the skin cells, of the same woman who was also uh, donating the eggs. So in that process, it actually was quite difficult to know whether the resulting cell line had actually come from the skin cell or from the egg itself. And that's what created much of the confusion because they should be essentially genetically identical. And indeed they are. But what differs is the preservation of certain regions of the chromosomes and the way they recombine. That's a signature that unequivocally can distinguish whether the cell line was derived by nuclear transfer or cloning or by this process of parthenogenesis.